for man would swallow me up fighting all day my enemies would hound me all day how many's ever had people hounding you the rest of you are lying there's one that 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 is have you ever had stuff hounding you come on be honest this morning get for there were many who fight against me almost oh, high whenever I am afraid listen to this whenever I am afraid I will trust in you speak life I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalms 56. Psalms 56. Psalms 56. Psalms 56. Psalms 56. And they're going to put it on the screen in the... King James Version. This will be in the New King James Version. So you'll get the point. It says, Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Man would swallow me up. Fighting all day. He oppresses me. My enemies would bound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. You know, if you have a vision, the Bible says in Habakkuk that if, uh, the, uh, if you don't have vision, the people perish or they run without restraint. If you don't have a vision for you personally or vision for you and your family, if you don't see the, the next step, you will let the surroundings overshadow you. Maybe I'm in the wrong church this morning. If you don't have a vision for your future, for your next step, for what God wants you to... It, it could be total chaos around you. But if you have a vision, which means if you can see through the chaos... Everybody knows uh, similarly what an eagle does. I really am preaching to the choir. Huh? <laughs> Everyone knows what an eagle does. He soars above the storm. I once told a, a pastor friend of mine that was wanting to relocate and struggling and different things like that. I said, you can't move in the smoke, you got to move in the fire. Which means in the smoke, you can't see nothing. This week, I cut down some branches around the house and put them in a fire. And, and uh, you know, I, I wasn't getting anywhere with the fire because the, the wood was a, a little wet and different things like that. So I put gasoline on it. Okay? It absolutely worked. And when I threw the cup on the, get, on the fire, I didn't realize there was a little trail, right? There would be a little trail, Brother Phil. One thing's for sure, the fire came up. Burnt what I needed to burn at the time. But can you imagine that fire at night? You can see, you can do things, you can take your next step in the fire, but you can't take it in the smoke. 
I was not worried when I was burning the, the logs and the different things uh, when there was a fire. But when I put brush on it, like leaves, Brother Sean, and, 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 and grass clippings and, you know, the stuff you probably shouldn't burn in a neighborhood. And when I put that, it enveloped with smoke. And I was cutting my grass and I was a little worried because all I seen was smoke. If you were overcome by worry and anxiety and oppression and fear, nine times out of ten, you're walking in the smoke and not the fire. You're walking. You're journaling. You're, you're walking one step in front of the other in the smoke. You, you, you try to hang on to different things and you try, to, you try to grab for straws. You try to do these things to try to get back. But you're walking in the smoke and not the fire. David said, For man would swallow me up. Fighting all day. My enemies would hound me all day. How many of you have ever had people hounding you? The rest of you are lying. There's one that, that, that is... Have you ever had stuff hounding you? Come on, be honest this morning. Get it. Hounding you. For there were many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, listen to this, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I've said this over and, and over, and this has been the theme of the last few months, is that you do not have the solutions in your life. You do not have the answers. You do not have all of the, 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 the answers, the questions. You don't have all of it wrapped up. You don't have the solutions. Only Jesus does. You don't have the solutions. If you did, you wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need this church. We wouldn't need anything. We would have the solution. And therefore, there's lots of people that are, that are around us in this church and around our influence that absolutely don't need the church, don't absolutely need God because they got it all under control. But I'm going to tell you something. That will end. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the money. It's the love of money. What is the love of money? Why did I switch to money? I have no idea. But with the love of money, you know what it is? Is that you put your trust and you put your faith in the money. You don't put your faith in what it does. You don't relax and love the, the, what it does. Okay, for an example, um, this complex, because you're on it, you see it. You see uh, this building, and you see the Family Life Center, you see the office complex, you see the grounds, the food pantry in the back, and the barn, and, and all of the stuff that is a 10 acres, and it, and it has it. This is what money produces. You bought this. We only owe $340,000 on this entire complex. If anybody would love to write a check, go ahead. We will cash it at least once. Twice it's on you. We enjoy this. But the love of money is never satisfied. It's never content. It squirms in and it, def it divides families. You don't think I'm telling the truth? Have someone die in your family that has money. Brothers and sisters, brothers and brothers, sisters and sisters will not speak to one another for years over ten bucks. 
over an end table. They'll give up years and years of relationship over money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Why did I say that? I have no idea. Someone needs to hear it. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise His word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. All day they twist my words. All all their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together. They hide. They mark my steps. When they lie in wait for my life, shall they escape by iniquity? In anger, cast down the peoples, O God. Listen to verse 8. You number my wonderings. And a lot of people use this at funerals. You put my tears... In a bottle. Are they not in your book? You number my wonderings. When you drift off. When you drift off in wonderings. God cares. About your wonderings. Because I've always, and, and I'm, getting to, I'm getting to this last, let me, let me just read it. Verse 9, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. God is for me. In God, I will praise His Word. In the Lord, I will praise His Word. In God, I will put my trust and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Absolutely nothing. The same word is in uh, Hebrews 13. And I believe it's around the 6th verse or 8th verse. It talks about what can man do to me? Absolutely nothing. Man cannot do anything to you when you are a spirit-filled believer that loves God with all their heart, would take nothing for their journey. You cannot do anything. to. You can't kill a dead man. can't kill a dead man oh you can you can you can push him down you can kick him while they're down you can kick him in the face but i'm telling you i'm telling you a person that loves jesus if they're on the ground it might be just a finger or an elbow but we're coming back uh, it might be just just a shoulder coming up but we're going to point to the where our help comes from our help comes from the lord make no mistake about it god is in control when you trust him verse 12 he says vows made to you are binding upon me O God this doesn't say this in the King James but it should vows made to you are binding upon me O God Listen to this, and here it is. I will render praises to you. Now, it's interesting. The word render there, it means to be in a covenant of peace. A covenant of peace. Vows made to you are binding. Your praise is binding. Your praise is a covenant of peace. What does this mean? It means that peace is the foundation of every chaotic situation. You just got to get there. 
What's happening in North Carolina, what's happening all around the world is a chaotic situation. But the foundation of that is peace. There is a covenant of peace. The only way that this thing is going to turn out for the good, for what God has, is that if we find peace in the storm, and the peace is Jesus, there is a covenant of praise that a believer must have, and that covenant is peace knowing that this if you're going through a situation there's peace if you're going through fear there's peace if you're going through depression there's peace if you've lost someone in your life due to death there is peace if you have a church that's filled with anger and people are are yelling at each other there is peace if you've got a marriage that's jacked up you need peace there is a foundation of peace i wish i had a half a church that would understand that in the middle of your storm there is peace every decision every decision is based upon peace peace in the middle of a storm peace that passes all understanding there is a covenant every time yeah, keep standing if you can Every time you worship, every time you speak His name, you are speaking a covenant of peace. Your praise is binding. That means when you praise, something happens. It's just not a song. It's just not words on a screen. It's just not a church service. There is a covenant of peace that happens when you speak the name of Jesus into your situation and into your home and into your family. If you've got something going on in your life right Right now speak a covenant of peace that will say no matter what I am going to go after the peace he says get ready to sing vows made to you are binding upon me oh God Thank you, Lord. A covenant of peace. When you have a covenant, covenant is a big word in the Bible because there are many different kinds of covenants. There is a blood covenants that are binding. They would seal the covenant with blood. I don't feel like God's going to lead me out on a limb and saw it off right here. But when you speak praise and you sing praise over your life and over your situation, there is a binding agreement that God will take care of you. In the midnight hour, Paul and Silas sang praises unto God. And the walls began to shake. When they sang praises, something shook. And I'm going to tell you, if you have something that's going on in your life today, sing praises. Because it's about to shake this morning. It's about to let loose. There's a breakthrough coming to your life and into your situation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody give him praise this morning on the drums, on the piano, on the guitar. Lift up your voice and give him praise this morning. Come on, lift up your 